I remember it was uh, before I was bar mitzvah, and my father woke me up in the morning, and he said, we're going to go to the airport. Rav Herzog is coming to Chicago, and when we, all the Rabonim in Chicago are going to the airport to welcome him. I was a Ben Yochid by my father, mm -hmm. so I was also one of the Rabonim. <laughs> so I went. And I remember how he looked when he came off the plane. Eze I mean, what an aristocracy. The, 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 he had the, 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 the cane, the mater, the mater, mater and, and, the the and the cylinder. And the cylinder hat, and in the other hand, he had a Tanakh. Machon, always. And then the, we came to the yeshiva, so we were all in the yeshiva. There were uh, maybe yeah. time, uh, 200 bachrim. That wasn't only Chicago, that was the whole American Midwest. It was Kansas City and Minneapolis and Cleveland and from That's all America. Amazing. The amazing. What a historic visit. And he said, he gave a shear in Halacha, in Yiddish. In the synagogue or in no, the No, in the main Midrash of the Yeshiva. Right. And then when he finished the shear, he said in, in his perfect English, he wrote the PhD on the trailer. Oh, you know. it's, it, it's still published, and he guessed right. He guessed uh, 80 Absolutely. years uh, earlier. Before he guessed landing right. in Eretz Israel, he knew it's Argamon Chadrozei. Murex Trunculus. He's like, Hi, you're the only one who knows it. You're amazing. So <laughs> he said, he said, I want to say a few words to the young men in the yeshiva. And he said, I just came from the Pope of Rome. That, that's how he called it the Pope of Rome, and he said, I gave him a list of Jewish children that were put into Catholic institutions by their parents to save them from the Germans. And I said, I give you the list, and I want you to give me back the children. And he said, the Pope said to him, he would not do so, because he said anyone that came into a Catholic institution was immediately baptized. And once you're baptized in the Christian faith, we can't give that person back to be raised in a different faith. And after he said that, he stopped and he started to weep. I mean, I never saw somebody cry that way. He put his head down on the stand there. It was the whole 2,000 years poured out. And I remember we were all in the down. We didn't, you know. And then he strengthened himself. And he looked around the room. He said, I cannot do anything more for those children. But what are you going to do for the Jewish people? What are you going to do to build the Jewish people again? And then later, we all went by him to shake his hand, and he gave everybody a bracha. He says, and I was a little child yet. I was, I was 12, maybe. He said, did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Remember what I said. Don't forget what I said. And that made such a roshim, such an impression upon all of us. And from that group in the yeshiva, I mean, the, my chaverim, they made michlala lebanotir. They did also an Irishman, an Cooperman. Yeah, also an Irishman. Cooperman is in. There's a family in Bethlehem. Right, and there's one. Uh, he's uh, Emmanuel yeah, and, uh, and Bernstein, and all of them. It was a. Uh, I met Cooperman. He's 95 years old in Bethlehem. Right, and his son is the rabbi of Avatzion, by the way. So we were in the same shear together. Yeah, He's older than I am, but we were in the same shear together because he came to the yeshiva later. Why he came to Chicago from Ireland, I never knew, but that's what happened. And he married a woman from, Ireland, from well, Chicago. I have to check it because I have to speak to Rabbi Cooperman Jr. and they should come and visit you. Yes. That's our next project already. Okay. <laughs> and, no, so, and that was all, you know, from one speech, came out the institutions, came out, uh, and they, they went, uh, many of them were over there to Israel, they were Ramim Binitiv Mayor in Yerushalayim. Unbelievable. 
And all from one you, speech. By the way, his efforts with the Pope did help. Yes, later. There was an effort, a huge effort. Underground. They, they and stole they started to open, uh, They opened the door. The Officially, he couldn't do right. anything, but underground they right. did. Right. 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 I had members in my shul in Muncie that were raised Catholic. Really? Yeah. What do you say? There are many stories. But I, I said that that's why they were <clears> in <throat> my shul. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that in the especially to American Jewry. The uh, strengthening of Jewish ties is attached to the land of Israel. That is what has kept us throughout the thousands of years of exile. We always were going home. We always knew where we belonged. So even, in, even when we were in Siberia, we weren't in Siberia in our mind and in our heart. We were, in, we're going there to Israel, we're going to Yerushalayim. And in our time, it became a reality. And because of that reality, we should strengthen ourselves and tell it to our children and grandchildren implanted within them. So whether we ourselves come now is immaterial. In our soul and in our heart, we're all here, and we're here to build the Jewish future. So I want to wish you that today is Cholamoy Pesach, Zman Cheruteinu, we are free, we're independent. I want to wish you the best of everything, and we should always hear good news from each other. And it's my honor and pleasure to have the President of the State of Israel, Mar Yitzhak Herzog, here as a guest in my home. Thank you very much. So, Rabbi Wein, uh, I'm very honored and very moved to be in your home, in Yerushalayim. I must say that uh, your strength, you go from strength to strength, coming out with new books, uh, lecturing and teaching and filling up entire synagogues with people who come to pray and of course feel a, a spiritual experience uh, with the love of Israel and the love of the Jewish people. And for me it's uh, sort of extremely symbolic that way back then in 1946 it was my late grandfather my namesake, Rabbi Isaac Halevi Herzog, who has impacted your life so tremendously. He was a giant of a rabbi. He lived not far away from here, and Ibn Ezra. Yeah, he Ibn Ezra. And uh, yeah. I can tell you that the year before that, my late father, Chaim Herzog, who was an officer in the British Army liberating Europe from the Nazis, was one of the first uh, soldiers to enter bergen belsen concentration camp 77 years ago and this week, and found skeletons of uh, human beings hardly living or breathing, and told them in Yiddish that he's an officer from Eretz Israel, and they didn't believe him at first. And uh, a few years later, he became a general in the Israeli army, and later on, uh, Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, and president of Israel. That. So we believe that we must serve our nation, medol edol, and so do you. And I'm a... Uh, I want to wish you many, many years of doing great service to our people Amen. and teaching. Thank Amen. you. And you too. You too. To all of you. You're, you're an inspiration. Thank you.